Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So today I'm here with my one week review of the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. So you probably saw my unboxing and first impressions video here about five days ago. And so far I have a decent experience with it, but there are things that I like and there are things that are absolutely frustrating, especially for a product at this price point. And I'm just gonna give you a disclaimer now. Normally I like to clean off like my phone screens and my products and stuff and make them look super ultra pristine before I put them on video, but I feel like people need to see this. This thing looks gross. I, I've been, I, I've even cleaned it off a couple of times over the last few days and it gets like fingerprints and smudges and oils and everything on it. Worse than any phone. <laughs> or laptop that I've ever seen. So I don't know if maybe it's just the Mystic Navy one. I don't know how people's experiences are with the Mystic Bronze, but I don't like this one bit. But anyway, <laughs> before I get too far into that, I just wanted to give you all that warning because you're gonna see this throughout the video, but we're gonna dive in, we're gonna talk about it and my experience with it over the last week. Before we do that though, I do wanna say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for being here. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's take a look at the Galaxy Book Pro 360 and see what it's all about. All right, so as you can see here, I have, the, they should call it the Filthy Navy instead of the, the Mystic Navy. And that's not a jab at the Navy either since I was in the Air Force. <laughs> you guys are perfectly fine in my book. but. I do like the laptop. I think it probably has the best looking display I've ever seen on any laptop. The fingerprint sensor is nice, it's fast, it's reliable, it works, I mean, I like it. I think it's a really good addition. It's on par with the MacBook Pro. Screen, beautiful. I like that it's also a touch screen. I like that you can use it as a regular touch screen. I like you can use it with the S Pen. Now, the S Pen that comes with it is probably, it may be my favorite one yet. I really like it. I mean, it's very much on par with the Tab S7, S7 Plus one. It doesn't have any of the air gestures like you get with the Tab or with the Note though. It's very much like the one on the Tab S6 Lite or the one you can get with the S21 Ultra. It doesn't, you can't hold the button, you can't do any air gestures, none of that craziness. When you get close and you press it though, it'll pull up the menu over on the right. There we go. So you can get the create note, view all notes, smart select, screen write, live message, pin up. So it has some of the functionality there and I think it works pretty well. Now, a lot of people have been wanting to know if this is a replacement, if you can use this kind of as a replacement for the Tab S7 or Tab S7 Plus, that's a big no. It really isn't. Uh, and one thing is, is the palm rejection just isn't that good and it, it depends on what app you're using. So like when you go into, they've got it set up down here, you can go into whiteboard. Whiteboard's nice because you can draw on it and stuff, but the problem is, is when you put your palm on it, it thinks that it's pressure sensitive and that you're trying to zoom. So it moves the screen when you're trying to write. It's just, it does not work well. I, I can't demonstrate this well from this position, but it pulls up the grid bars, it moves things around, it zooms in, it zooms out. It's really frustrating. Uh, pin up is okay, it's not the greatest in the world. When you use Samsung Notes, it works really well. So it depends on which one of the little apps that you're using. Uh, the ones that are more app-based seem to work better, like actual, actual Android app-based, the ones you normally rely on for Samsung. And the ones that are not, like whiteboard, those are kind of a wash. Whiteboard is very, very frustrating to me. So yeah, it is very accurate though. It works well. It's nice to be able to use this in addition to being able to use the touchscreen with just your fingers or using it as a regular laptop. Now you can put it on the magnetic home on the back. It's okay. Like it doesn't really fall off, although it is kind of weak when it comes to the magnet. I wish it had a dedicated space to put it, but it's still, it seems to work there okay. And as I'm toting around, it hasn't really fallen off yet. But when you go to lift up the lid, it's it sits kind of up here on the back. Like I, I don't really, I don't really care for that. It's whatever, but I guess it's supposed to be super, super thin, which it is. So you can't really put it inside of the laptop. Now it only weighs about three pounds. This is a 15 inch model. The 13 inch model is smaller and lighter. Uh, they do a good job with that. I mean, it does a good job of dissipating heat. It has fans in there. There's fan control. You can actually turn that down or up, you know, depending on the level of noise that you want to deal with. It's got the little stoppers on the bottom, which seem to work okay. One of the most disappointing things about this laptop 
is the speakers. So you've got the two speakers on the bottom. I showed this off, I talked about it in my unboxing and first impressions. Probably the worst laptop speakers in any decent laptop I've ever tested. It is, I'm embarrassed for them. I don't know why in the world that they would put such terrible laptop speakers on here. My Tab S7 has better speakers. My S21 Ultra has better speakers. So I don't know why they did that. And then they put them on the bottom instead of putting them on the top where you could actually hear them better. So if it's in your lap, using it like a laptop, you don't hear very well and it's muffled. And then it's just not that good. And you can turn on Dolby. It helps a little bit, but it's also not intuitive. You you have to like basically search or go in for the Dolby app to turn it on. It's not something where it's like you can pull down the drop down shader like on your tablet and enable. So very frustrating how they did that. The ports are nice. I do wish it had an HDMI out. It's kind of frustrating it doesn't. And, but you can hook it up through USB-C for, for external monitor support. I did do that. Works well, works very seamlessly. You can have dual screens. You can you know set up the resolution where you get 4K resolution output, which I like because the 1080p on here is really frustrating. So the 1080p, when you're like on the home screen and looking at things, actually looks pretty good. It's, it's a sharp looking display, but then you go and actually open something. So let me open Google Chrome here real quick. Look, it, it just, it's so big because the resolution is not that high. When you have a smaller resolution, you have bigger looking windows. So the windows take up a lot of space. It looks really cramped. It reminds me more of those 13 something, 1368, 1300 by 768 resolution monitors that you get on like the cheaper laptops. They really, the windows are too big. So whenever you're actually doing stuff on the laptop, it feels cramped. I don't like that. Uh, the webcam is trash. Like the webcam is really, really bad. And uh, let me see if I can show you this. It, it's just not good. Um, I fired it up and I was looking at it and it's like, yeah, let me see if I can, there. Maybe you can see that on the camera. Like it's really bad. I even have really ideal lighting in here. <laughs> and I'll, I'll see if I, I'll take a picture. You can see this, the overlay. It's just really disappointing. It doesn't look as good as the MacBook Pro. Look, yes, people have given the MacBook Pro flack. Yeah, they're like really expensive. This is really expensive too. So it's not a pass for Apple at all. It's just a reaffirmation that when you're buying Pro Series laptops, you should have a Pro Series webcam, especially in the year 2021 when we're zooming and doing more stuff with our webcams than ever. So if you're spending $1,500 on a laptop, by gosh, put a decent webcam in there. So that's another big frustration I have here. So I don't like the screen resolution. I don't like the speakers. I don't like the webcam. I don't like the lack of palm rejection on certain apps that hasn't been implemented well. Um, I do like how thin it is. I don't like the finish. I like the way it looks, but it's really disgusting. It's really terrible. Um, as far as performance, so it's super zippy. I love the performance. It's really fast. I've been impressed with the graphics. I actually installed some games to see how well they run. Diablo 3 runs like a champ. League of Legends runs like a champ. You can play Fortnite on medium settings pretty well. I was surprised. You can play Valorant pretty well on here. Uh, Call of Duty is an absolute no-go. Like, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> it's so bad. So, there is actually a lot of versatility in this. Even though it's only got the Iris XE graphics, I feel like it handles it pretty well. I haven't tried editing any video yet. I'm going to try that this week. That's gonna be a separate video. But uh, yeah, so I do like it. I like it a lot. Oh, and also all the people complaining about the screen wobble. There's a lot more things that people should have been complaining about other than this, this screen wobble because it's so light. And it's not something I really ding them on because it's super light. If it's super light, yeah, understandably the screen is gonna move some, but I don't really find that it's that big of a deal. Uh, outside, if you're gonna use it outside in direct sunlight, yeah, it's gonna reduce your visibility on the screen, but who's using a laptop out in direct sunlight anyway? Not a lot of people. If you're in direct sunlight, get out of direct sunlight. Battery life is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm getting about seven, eight hours with no problems, and I used it for a full day of work today, and it lasted me all day. So I think the battery's fine. It's nowhere near the 20 hours they say you're gonna get. I don't know how they ever got that metric, but you can get eight. I, I think you can probably get that pretty comfortably. So, I mean, yeah, you might need to turn the brightness, uh, don't max it out. And I'm not really using the sound a lot because it sucks. Uh, I did listen to music for about an hour today, but I think battery life is good. 
I think performance is good. I think the metrics are in the right place. I love the touchpad. One thing that gets me with the touchpad though that's gonna irk you, depends on how you use it. And this is kind of a weird thing. If you like to touch the touchpad with your finger flat a lot, it likes to move the cursor as you're trying to press it. So it's really annoying. If you press it more pinpoint like down like this, as opposed to this, it works much better. So this good, this not good. Especially if one part of your finger hits before the other. The clickiness is not overly bad. It's smooth as silk. I really like it. I enjoy using it. Here's something, I don't want to offend anyone, but this laptop is not good for using it in bed. And um, I've been having a lot of issues lately. I've got a lot of shoulder problems. Um, so I, I've been trying to do some work from like, I'll be sitting or laying in bed with my, like, my legs propped up. The touchpad on this is so shallow towards the bottom. If you have any sort of a gut, <laughs> like I do, uh, it will push it and hold it. Like if you've got it set on your, uh, set on your stomach, uh, it will push on the button whenever you press it down and it won't bounce back up. And it's really, really frustrating. Um, if you're skinny or if you put like a board or you put something in the way, like some sort of like a little like laptop pillow or something, it should be fine. But if you're just sitting there in bed and you've got it pressed up against your stomach or if you've got your knees raised up, you can forget about it. Also, one other pet peeve I don't like on the 10 key keyboard over here, for whatever reason, they decided to put the zero button down here underneath the one and not centered underneath the two. Instead of hitting the zero all the time and continually hitting the period. So I've had to retrain my brain for that. Uh, normally the zero key is bigger and it goes underneath both. Since this is a condensed 10 key, that's how it works. So it's really annoying. The enter key over there is nice though. And then up at the top, you got the plus minus divide and multiplication sign. I do like that. Um, it does work okay flipping it around. I worry, like every time I grab the screen, I like I worry I'm gonna bend it. it it feels a little fragile. Not that it actually is fragile, I just worry that because the screen is so thin when I flip it around, like I'm gonna break it. Like you can flex it by squeezing the edges. So I don't like that. It does turn off the keyboard and disable it though. You can use it this way. It's just not, it's not a real good substitute for a tablet. I would still take the tab. I, I would probably, I would still use the Tab S7, S7 Plus over this. This is not a lap, this is not a tablet replacement for the Tab S7 or S7 Plus. Uh, the Samsung apps that are in here, they're okay. Like some of the stuff like for the Samsung Switch and for the S Pen features and things like that, I think it does all right. Trying to use Dex with it and some other stuff is really clunky. Like they say that you can like connect your phone to it and it'll show up on the screen. I'm having hit or miss success with it and it's really slow. So I'm still gonna test that out more, but I don't think it's the best ever. And I apologize that this doesn't have more B-roll in it. Um, this is just, I'm really just talking off the top of my head, going over um, what I think about the laptop. I like, the, I like it from a performance standpoint. I like it mostly from a design perspective. I think that the laptop that's more like a phone is a little oversold. I think the implementation of the S Pen could be better. Um, I think that there are some things design wise, especially with the sound, with the resolution. And I know why the resolution is dumbed down. It's to say battery. But when my Galaxy Chromebook from almost from like a year and a half ago has 4K, this really should have had 4K. So that's all I've got in this video. This is my one week review. I'm going to cover more. I'm going to make more videos about it. I've been thinking about this for the last couple of days and how I could bring this to you guys and talk about it. And hopefully this is helpful. Uh, really, I'm talking to people who are sincerely interested in this. Like, if you're interested in buying this, this is stuff you need to hear. If you're here for, like, eye candy and, like, oh, I really want to see, like, all these pretty things, I'm sorry that's not what this video is. I couldn't do that today, but I needed to, I wanted to get this video made for you guys. So, that's all I've got. And, of course, hopefully I'll appreciate my honesty when it comes to my thoughts on the product as opposed to the more flashy stuff that you might could get somewhere else. Uh, I'm always going to tell y'all what I think about it. That's me. So... That's it. If you have any questions or comments or more stuff you want me to look at as I'm testing it, please sound off in the comment section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when, when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.